G'day everyone. Today, we are exploring more predators in the world of the digital jungle. Unlike you, my name's Lucas. Welcome to SumSub. This year, a real digital revolution occurred. A revolution that you probably haven't even noticed. In January, four and a half billion people on Earth used the internet. Congratulations. But for the first time in 52 years of the internet's existence, most of the traffic was generated not by humans, but by programs. According to Barracuda Networks, bots accounted for 64% of all transmitted data, and almost 40% of that traffic was accounted for purely by malware. What are these creatures of the online jungle? Should we feel threatened? And how can you protect yourself and your business from a new threat? Let's dive in. Let's figure out what exactly these pesky bots are. You see, all a bot is, is a program that communicates with other programs and services as if it were a real person. Bots mimic our behavior. For example, they send and search queries through the same interfaces as we do. Bots are literally pretending to be a human. I could not sleep. I was having human thoughts, so I got up and had a human cup of coffee. Then I sat on the terrace. Sounds like you're getting human all over. What for? To simplify the life of their creators, of course. The bot takes over the execution of frequently repeated tasks. For example, it can act as an online consultant, asking and answering simple questions under the guise of an employee. Bots automate routine tasks, download videos from YouTube or TikTok, monitor the weather, convert files, and collect information about Instagram followers. You see, bots do not get tired, do not get distracted, do not make mistakes or typos. Therefore, bots can actually cope with simple tasks much more fast and efficiently than us human meat suits. You can also play poker with a bot or instruct it to play cards for you. And here we find a clear example between the good and the bad bots. If you log into Telegram and launch a poker bot, there will be nothing illegal or fraudulent about it. You will play cards against a program, just as if you installed the app on your smartphone. It's just that you don't communicate with the program directly, but through the Telegram chat interface. If you use a poker bot, however, to play poker for you in an online casino, that is fraud and can cause you trouble from a simple account ban to even a prison sentence. But why? Using a bot will give you an unfair advantage over other players. The bot is not gambling. It is mathematically and accurately analyzing probabilities. It remembers the entirety of the history of cards dealt and can play without interruptions for days and days on end. Against such a program, a simple person like me has zero chance of winning. That's why nobody will let you sit down with a laptop at a Las Vegas cards table. Bite my shiny metal ass. It's much more difficult to track the use of bots in online casinos, but it's not impossible. Bots are revealed given their mannerisms during games, repeated bets, Still speed game. of decision making, winning stable percentages, and total game time. The same analysis of behavior allowed Barracuda Network Specialists to determine the real number of bots on the World Wide Web. Do you know what scares me about these numbers? It is the fact that there are more bad bots than good bots. The good guys are losing. Would you like to know more? So sit back, get a cup of tea, and allow me to go through the seven deadly sins that bots do and how best to deal with these. Bots steal content. Imagine that you are writing unique articles for a network security website or a blog about grandma's saucy recipes. One day you may find that there are fewer and fewer readers on your website. This is a sign that someone is stealing your articles. Attackers use parsing, a process of searching for texts and then copying them. These copies are automatically published on aggregator websites that display contextual advertising and promote other sources. If the Google search bot finds these texts on the sites earlier than your texts on your sites, the attacker will automatically be considered the original author of the text. Of course, the authorship can be disputed, but for this, you need to discover the theft as early as possible. If you have any suspicions that your texts are being stolen, check them for uniqueness. It's very simple. 
Copy a couple of sentences from your most recent article to Google. Make sure you put your quotation marks at the beginning and end of the query. This will allow you to find an exact match of the phrases. If you do find your text on unfamiliar sites, simply fill out a DMCA. That's a Google Digital Millennial Copyright Act form. Link to that is in the description. If you often have to check your articles, I can also recommend using the Copyscape service. In the free version, which is nice, it will show 10 sites that have copied your text or photos. Just type in the address of the original page. But if you are the owner of a small information resource or a corporate blog, then I recommend using special services. For example, try installing DMCA protection badges on your website. This will greatly simplify the protection of your copyrights, especially for sites hosted on the servers of American companies. Unsolicited mailings, comments with links to other people's resources, any unwanted messages you receive in your applications, these are all spam. Have you noticed a surge of these recently on YouTube? Historically, this was the first malicious use of bots. Back in the early 90s, they were the first bots to go through the pages of the web and search for email addresses. This is an extremely simple task, of course. All they needed to do was find one word in which there was an at symbol in the middle and a dot near the end. To protect themselves from these bots, you've maybe seen this on forums, some users would try to mask their addresses. For example, using an unusual combination of characters when typing their email, such as commas instead of the at sign, or dots in strange places. Even replacing the dot symbol itself with the literal word dot. Of course, such methods were also known to the creators of bots, so the tool for collecting email addresses became even more sophisticated. At first, the addresses were shown in pictures. Bots couldn't recognize the pictures, and people would actually have to manually type in their own addresses when sending an email from this picture. Thankfully, complex scripts came to the rescue. They replaced letters with their numeric codes or mixed characters with cascading style sheets so that people could understand them, but the bot programs could not. Aww. Now in all popular content management systems, there are functions that mask email addresses. Whether websites actually use these or not, well, that's up to the site owner and their moral compass. Therefore, I recommend that you never share your main email address, if you can. If you regularly need to share your address, for example, on forums and trading platforms, get a separate email box that you will not value and change it regularly. For registration on little known and maybe shadier websites, you can even use single use mailboxes. Temp Mail Plus or 10 Minute Mail will be handy for this. These are extremely useful services, for instance, if you want to connect to Wi-Fi at the airport and not get a bunch of ads for hotels and car rentals, you can use these temporary email addresses. Now, the sophistication is going to bump up a notch. A botnet is when a number of devices, computers, servers, or routers are all running malware. Most of the time, nobody knows that they're infected. Bots on the network exchange information, collect data, and even try to infect other devices. Meet, vent, and surf. And if you see a resemblance to the architect from The Matrix, it's not a coincidence. The filmmakers were actually inspired by his real image. After all, surf created the TCP IP protocol, an algorithm by which all computers on the internet communicate. Back in 2007, he announced at least 600 million or a quarter of all computers on the internet are connected to botnets. That means you. Unfortunately, the scale of the problem has only grown since then. Now, in addition to computers, hundreds of millions of phones, smartphone devices are connected to this network too. And they become all too hospitable for botnets. In 2019, the Mirai botnet included more than 500,000 Internet of Things devices, IP cameras, presentation systems, even LG TVs and fridges. Such networks do not greatly interfere with the owners of equipment, but they can cause some huge problems to the entirety of the internet. An example of this, they are often used to attack internet services. At the command of the creator, 
Devices that are part of such a network simultaneously begin to flood the victim with a huge number of web requests. The site, of course, cannot handle processing such amounts of traffic, and it stops responding to any request. Ordinary users like you or I see just a simple error message and nothing else. When we consider how much money can be lost during a period of outage for global internet services, we can begin to imagine the type of damage these attacks can cause. In the case of online stores, there is another attack vector. Sophisticated bots imitate real buyers, add random products to the cart, place orders for people whose data is found online, or reserve all the leftover product without making the purchase. In any case, the store owner incurs the cost of working with fake orders and real customers, they're gonna go shopping on a less laggy and better stocked competitor. It is relatively easy to protect your computer from a botnet. Firstly, use the latest version of an antivirus software. Do not run files from unknown senders and for God's sake, do not download anything from suspicious websites. Regularly changing all passwords on network devices and disconnecting from internet of things can also help. If you're the owner of the site and you're afraid now that your competitors who also watch our videos will decide to attack you with a botnet, do not despair. You can simply use one of the cloud services with DDoS protection. For example, Cloudflare, Encapsula, or Myra. Moreover, bots have not yet managed to cope with biometric identification systems. The algorithm is too complex for them. They don't have faces. So automated identity verification can protect large websites from fake buyers. Pride is the favorite sin of bots, as bots can fake website visits. It doesn't matter whether you need to promote your website on Google search results, add an extra thousand likes to your Instagram profile, or even increase your views on YouTube. All bots operate according to the same algorithm. They pretend to be ordinary people and imitate their behavior. Fortunately, large services can afford to use digital footprint technology to identify these types of bots. They just leave too many unnecessary traces by which they are easily calculated, taken into account, and then taken out of the advertising and monetary equations. But there is also bad news. Some services such as YouTube have an extremely negative attitude by attempts from authors to promote their channel with the help of these types of bots. Instead of promoting your website and channel, and hitting that extra milestone in your subscribers, you can actually be in danger of being blocked and banned without the possibility of recovery. Therefore, botnets are sometimes even used to eliminate competitor channels on YouTube. It's simple, just fill someone else's channel with fake subscribers and boom, the creators will be removed from YouTube. My advice to the content creators out there is simple. Constantly, constantly monitor your traffic on your channel. If suddenly the number of views skyrockets dramatically with the gender, age, or country of residence changing dramatically too, do not rejoice. Contact YouTube support immediately. More than likely, someone is trying to expose you as an unscrupulous cheater. Bell Carson! <laughs> That's me. Now, in a video we did in the past about how large companies monitor us, we spoke about how contextual advertising algorithms work. Bill Gross's invention led to the emergence of an even more tailored type of advertisement, one that's based on your search engine queries. To make ads effective, Google and Facebook really collect and process huge amounts of data. There is so much data that these companies claim that automatic audience selection algorithms allow advertisers to then show ads only to those who may really be interested in them. This method is then called programmatic advertising. It sounds so attractive, this type of advertising, that in 2021, American companies spent almost 90% of the entire advertising budget just on these strategies. That means at least 88% of all clicks on these ads were fake. At least that's what our colleagues from Oxford Bio Chronometrics claim in their studies. According to their data, the share of humans in traffic from contextual advertising is about 2% only in the case of Google, 6% on Facebook, and LinkedIn can boast 12% real people clicking on their ads. Ooh, impressive numbers. It turns out that more than $150 billion were drained into the void. Well, 
Not quite. Botnets are not cheap toys, and advertising agencies, content producers, and social networks themselves can benefit from such frauds. Of course, to click a competitor's advertising means that that company is forced to flush their marketing budget into the void. This is just another method in the bloody business of advertising wars online. But when I'm paid, I always see the job through. I think this topic also deserves a detailed investigation. Let us know in the comments down below whether you would like to see a dedicated video on this topic. I only have one piece of advice here. If you are conducting an advertising campaign, do it in several stages. Don't rely on the golden shot, spending all your budget and praying you hit gold in the algorithm. Break your budget into smaller parts and manually test different hypotheses. No matter how big the data or volume from large companies are, in fact, you know your customers much better. And in the end, Facebook's interest targeting accuracy reaches 41%, which is not bad at all compared to programmatic ads. In the video about the mistakes of famous hackers, we talked about how passwords to the secrets of real cyber criminals are selected. On the internet, bots often do the same thing. They are trying to gain access to your profile by going through a pair of username and passwords that have been leaked on other websites. This is how most of those social media accounts are hijacked. Therefore, first check yourself in the database of Have I Been Pwned? A classic name in my opinion. Or you can check on Breach Alarm. Here you can actually check your email address and see if it has appeared in any sort of stolen data. If you use the current version of Google Chrome, and uh, well, you're not afraid of Big Brother upstairs, enable accounts verification in the browser settings. Chrome will then search for your email in any stolen databases they have access to. For advanced and more curious users, I can also recommend the dehashed service. It allows you to check compromised phones, IP addresses, even potentially compromised serial numbers on machines. Of course, though it's tricky, try to never use the same passwords for different services. I would generally recommend creating several different emails for different groups of services as much as possible. This way, you're not keeping all of your digital eggs in the one basket. It's funny, it's all us, funny. <laughs> And finally, bots can play a cruel, cruel joke with our credulity. Most often, such bots live on dating services. They try to imitate the behavior of living people. Most often, they pretend to be a young girl or guy, but usually girl, who recently came from another country. They'll start messaging you, saying they're from another country, which allows them to justify any clumsy phrases or mistakes in their answers. They ask more questions than they answer themselves, giving you the majority of the opportunity to speak. The more you write about yourself, the more keywords the bot will collect, and the more accurately it will work against you. If you've been on the internet for too long, slightly gullible, maybe you've just gotten used to trusting people, such a bot will quickly move on to financial issues. It will begin begging for gifts, for money, for that suddenly ill relative they have, even offering to invest in extremely profitable business opportunities. I just recently came across a bot that tempted me with a quick profit from playing with binary options. I refused, of course, as I only invest in meme stocks and overinflated NFT coins. It's not difficult to recognize such bots. Ask difficult questions that require a detailed answer. If the bot appears to be a real person from another country, you could even try using a couple phrases from their native language. Google Translate can help you with this, and the bot is unable to use it themselves. Of course, of course, never send money or credit card photos to people you've never met in person. They are almost 100% likely to be a scammer. Don't let the voice of the heart drown out the arguments of reason. You thought I'd trust you? As you can see, technology is getting more and more complicated every year. If in the early 90s, bots were just hunting for other people's addresses, which could then be easily deceived with a couple extra characters, today they've turned into a serious threat to our e-commerce and even to your personal life. 
engineers and programmers are constantly working on both sides of the barricade. But as in the rest of life, the attacking side has the benefit of creativity. Criminals and scammers are always playing with the white pieces. So your task is to take your digital security seriously. Don't neglect the simple rules of unique passwords. Always doubt and don't believe everything you're told. Don't be outraged when you are forced to enter a capture again on a website to prove that you're not a robot or even made to pick out those traffic lights from some random road in Nevada. After all, there are now more bots on the internet than real people. Don't forget, we are responsible for the technologies we create. Will bots become the good, the bad, or the ugly? It depends only on us. I love you all. Goodbye. Well, that's it for today in this brief dive into the unpredictable digital jungle. We're here at SumSub. See you in the next digital expedition.